Hi everybody, it's Lynn from Lynn's Crafts Designs. I'm just coming by today with a altered bottle tutorial DIY. I've started out by, I've cleaned the jar with alcohol first of all. Then I've put on three coats of gesso, just on the one side. Um, I'll explain why I did that later. I've put a line on the bottle where I want the decal to go because I've measured it out. I've laid it out here with some flat pieces. This is the way I want the design to, to go. So um, I'm going to make these resin pieces out of some paper clay because I want them to shape to the bottle. I, although I could shape them to the bottle with the resin, but the paper clay will be a little easier. So I've got that. I'll share with you the three um, mm -hmm, molds in just a minute. This is the water release decal. I've just printed it out on my inkjet printer. These particular water release decals are for the inkjet printer. They come in the transparent and they come in white. Now in hindsight, I probably should have bought the white because the white doesn't need to print out the areas where it's white so that the background doesn't have to be transparent. That's why we have to put the gesso on because the background of these is transparent. I've got a pocket watch that I'm going to use as an embellishment on the back. I did this ahead of time because it does require gluing together and the top part up here I did resin it together so that it will be kind of strong and so that it won't break when you drop it like that then I've got the book from the last video we did okay so that will also be an embellishment on the back Then I've just got these three molds that I took out. This one is um, <laughs> Vintage Art Decor Molds 1. This is the Baroque 3. Okay. It's got several long pieces and a couple of little the floret and a capital a called capital okay so that's the baroque three this one is baroque four that's got this one it's got this oak leaf it's got these two side flourishes and then for just some added detail, I chose this one, which is the Renaissance one. It's got like, this is a, a cherub type. It's kind of a gothic cherub. And it's got several little evil looking cherubs in my opinion. But anyway, <laughs> gothic cherub so hopefully that's what we're gonna use I'm gonna start out by showing you how to do the water release decal so I'm gonna go wet this I'm gonna go stick it in water for just 30 seconds or so and I'll be right back okay you can tell it's still really wet but you can also tell how it has released from the backing just kind of holding it in place on that loose end 
I'm just gonna slide the paper backing away. start to work from the middle and normally this would slide around a little bit better And this is why I said the, the water would be important. It will help you not only slide your finger around, but it will help you slide the decal around a little bit. Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to start shaping it around the bottle shape. pieces just get a little bit of glue and over one first gently coax it out of the mold Butter its backside. Even down to the very end. Okay, now I want the uh, <clears throat> I want the scallop part of the mold. Okay, sorry about that. I had a Terrible frog at the back of my throat. Okay, what keeps throwing me off is the beautiful lady is just a little off center to the right. Okay, sorry about that. My camera cut off. 
I just finished up the molding on the front. Plus, I added this one to the back. This one is... Okay. <laughs> this one. Okay. All the way up until my camera took a vacation. Okay, so I'm going to explain. I glued this one straight to the bottle. I did that because if you glue straight to the gesso, then you're just gluing to the gesso. You're depending on the gesso to hold everything to the bottle. So I glued this piece straight to the bottle. I'm gonna now I'm gonna gesso over it and I'll glue the rest of the pieces down but most of them will be glued to this anchor piece let's say okay so that being said I'm gonna mold this flower this baroque looking flower for the for the lid and then I'm gonna I'm gonna change my mind and do this Baroque looking clock instead of this pocket watch. This pocket watch doesn't have enough style for me, so this Baroque clock will fit in much better. So I'm gonna mold the clock mold the flower and then I'm gonna mold a couple of the cherubs from this one. I'm gonna do this one this tiny one with the wings right here um, and then maybe these uh, little round ones and maybe this maybe this little book latch right here okay so I'm going to get to that, and I'll show you at least a couple of these Baroque ones. These are little cherub ones. And that's what I got in my mind right now. Okay. Just a few quick... little molds Okay, that one is tiny little, tiny little one right here. Okay, then I'll scrape that one off into there. Give it a look over. Okay. Now, I just need to let that dry. And then I'll gesso over it. Um, but I'll save the last coat of gesso after I've added the rest of the goodies.
the rest of the goodies. Now this book is warping quite a bit, but hopefully that won't be too much of a problem. Alright, I'll be back when it dries. Okay. I've got the um, 3D matte gel. I think I'm gonna take the clock first. Boy, it really did warp. I intended to put it on while it was still a little damp, just to prevent that. Just buttered an extra little bit of glue. To make it tacky enough to stick. Okay, I'm actually going to let that dry a little bit first. Just, just because. <laughs> Okay, I've already glued on the book, just so it would have some time to set. This part is really gangly. <laughs> you don't know that word? Look it up on Google. Um, it really doesn't play well with the shape I'm going for. but. Just something we're gonna have to deal with. So I decided to take this tiny little cherub face. And that's where I'm going to put it. Right. In that little hole. Okay. And I'm going to take this big bat cherub. Now remember that it's mostly going to touch right in the middle. Cherub. Let me 
make sure I can face the right way up. I'm gonna tuck him right behind the edge of the clock. Sorry, that is not where he goes. I'm going to take one of the little owls. And put him where he's tucked behind the clock, but he's right on top of the... A little stalk of whatever he's resting on. Okay. Yeah. Ah, the little chair, but I don't remember where I put him. <laughs> Let me refresh his glue on the back. Okay, we'll tuck him right under the other side of the clock. Yeah. Okay, we got two more. Not sure whether we're going to use them both, but... This little double chair I brought here. to kind of proportionately fill up that space without without getting too close to the other decorations. Yeah, that's what I was trying to go for. Really all the way around. Okay, so we've got this last little Owl right here. Just tuck him somewhat behind the behind the wing. No, I really don't like that. I really like it better without anything.
Okay, I think I'm going to call it good there and um, save the painting for the final part. Um, an hour is plenty long enough. I'm sure this one's going to run longer. But as you can see how that book is going to it's going to stick out when we're looking at the front. Just the cover just a bit. Couple of little flying cherubs. Book in the clock. And we'll add some other stuff after it's painted. So. I really hope you enjoyed it so far. Please like, share, and subscribe. All my social media links are listed below. I've got an Etsy shop if you want to check that out. Where you can find most of the stuff that I share with you as far as jewelry goes. Bye for now.